Sixers talk. Here we are. Ethan Shu, Davis Heckman. Ethan, there's been a lot of Sixers moves. We're big Sixers fans, obviously. And, uh, you know, we wanted to dedicate a little little five to ten minute episode about it because there's been a lot of moves and a lot of people want to hear about it. So I want to hear uh, – we're going to start by just talking about the biggest move of the offseason for the Sixers so far. Yeah. Uh, since the, the Eagles are done, my focus is completely on December 22nd. And the Sixers playing. I don't think the schedule is out. Is it? Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. So don't know who we're playing yet. I bet it will be prime time because this team is looking very show, show time. Filthy. Uh, filthy. Filthy for sure. So I thought we'd do a little grading, Davis. So I think there's a couple different categories we can go into this. We could do starting five, bench grades, front office grades. And then we have our starting lineups as well as the draft. Let's, like you said, let's talk about the biggest moves so far. A, we got rid of Horford. Sorry, Horford and Richardson. Yep. I think the Horford deal, while, like, don't get me wrong, I, I Horford got a ton of crap for being in Philadelphia, but he was a good player. He's a good player. And for yep. what it was, the fit just was not there. And for some reason, Elton Brand thought it was. Totally agree. I, I don't really understand why it ever happened in the first place, but hey, Daryl Morey. He's a god. Yes, he is. And the second biggest trade, Jay Rich, definitely gave up too much to get rid of him. We gave up him and the 32nd, 36th pick in the draft. And, I mean, that was a high draft. There was a high pick. Only because the amount of talent that was still there at 36 was crazy. Yeah. Tyrell Terry was still there. I mean, Tyler Bay, um, Desmond Bain should have been there. I liked him a lot. Um, and a couple other really good players that – this is a very deep draft, and there was not a lot of ton of talent at the top, and that's what got the most attention. But as the draft went down, a lot of depth in the middle rounds. And giving up that pick was huge, but Jay Rich, he's gone. Yeah. And also, same thing with Horford. He's a great player. He just did not fit here, and he couldn't shoot well enough for the strategy we we're going with. But I think he'll be really good in, in Dallas besides uh, Luka Doncic, perimeter yeah. defender who can score. He should do wonders in Dallas with him and Porzingis. For sure. I mean, he's he's the younger uh, – who's the guy? Tim Hardaway Jr. I mean, and the better defender. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. going to be pretty cool to have there. But I totally agree with you. I think the fit with Horford just wasn't there. Um, and that's where I love Maury. Maury's coming in and knows what we need. We need shooters around Ben and, and mm-hmm. Embiid. That's, that's what worked in Houston. Never got them a championship. But I think this roster is arguably better than any roster Daryl Maury has ever had before. So, uh, wow, that's a hot take, David. It is a hot take. It is a hot take. But look, I mean, I, I would say Simmons and Embiid is a better one two than Harden and Westbrook just because of the fact that they're both ball dominant. Simmons and what about Harden Embiid, and Chris Paul, like, I, I do like they had that. a lot of talent in those that's teams. true. That's true. They did. That was but, that was his best team getting Chris Paul mm-hmm. and Harden. But that one year they should have gone to the finals, but uh, Chris Paul pulled a hammy. Yep. And the and game went, six of the conference finals. Yep. And then they, didn't they shoot like two of 37 from three? It was something absolutely Oh, that game ridiculous. seven? Yep. That was ridiculous. I thought yep. they were going to beat the Warriors that year and go to the finals. I know. I know. They would have gotten killed by the Cavs, though. But, I know, exactly. But um, let's, all, let's go to draft grades. I mean, like you just said, this was a big draft. And mm-hmm. this is a big draft for the Sixers. And our number one guy, we took guy from Kentucky, Maxie. I, I know you love him, so I want to hear about him. Tyrese Maxey. I love Tyrese Maxey. I covered it a little bit in the in the um, draft video and podcast we did a couple or last week. But Tyrese Maxey not have had a week to deal with it. I think he's great. I think he sh- he should start at some point this season, and I think that's a good possibility. But he is a great combo guard. And um, my friend Harrison, who you saw on the podcast on Monday night, he Hotel Tango shout out. But he said that Tyrese Maxey is not just a shooting guard. People are forgetting that. It's a combo guard. He can handle the ball. He can shoot. I did not know this. He can play defense a lot better than some people give him credit for, Davis. I know. Because one thing we need on this team is the 3 and D guy. But he's not 3 and D. He's a guard. He can take the pressure off Ben. And I think a big thing that Ben can show off this season with more ball handlers is his ability to, to score and play off ball. Because it's there. It's just not as prominent. Like 20, 2018, when we had Jimmy Butler, who handled the ball well, a lot, we had Simmons making plays. And they, it opens the lane up because I know we had our little argument in the last podcast, Davis. You can't, you can't, no, it happens, but you can't argue that Ben Simmons is very dynamic and his 
just presence on the floor throws off game plans. And especially when you got guys like Maxi out there. But I love the grid. I love the draft. So, and then we also got Isaiah Joe. I love Isaiah Joe, yeah. Arkansas shooting guard, who apparently can play point guard. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but he he shoots the lights out. He's so talented. Um, and then we also got Paul Reed, who is a project power forward. Yeah. Um, and I like that. I like it. We'll see what happens with him. I think he's going to start in the G League just because there's not enough room on this roster. But overall, my draft grade, I'm going to give it a B. I'm going to give it a B. I think the maxi pick itself is an A. But then Isaiah Joe and Tyler and um, Paul Reed, I think they're great picks. We just don't know how well they're going to pan out. So I'm on the edge of a B, B plus. But I'm just going to say a B because I think there's a lot of potential there. But just right now, I'm not sure. Davis, right. what do you think? No. I, I agree with what you're saying. I think, you know, Maury got the guys that we needed. And in, in my opinion, he got, and I'm going to stick more with Maxi when it comes to my grade, just because obviously he was the first round pick and mm-hmm. that's what matters more. And Maxi, a guy who can finish at the rim, super athletic. He's not a great three point shooter, but mm-hmm. I mean, we've, we've worked the offense around Ben Simmons, a guy who doesn't even shoot threes. So I think uh, the additions of Seth Curry and, and um, I almost said Draymond Green, Danny Green, um, <laughs> Are huge. Old bums. <laughs> yeah, are huge, especially on the bench. Like one of those guys is going to come off the bench with Maxi. So I'm definitely giving this draft grade a B plus. I think Maxi is going to be a key part of our offense at some point. And uh, I think he's going to replace that shake Milton role. He, that Milton kind of came into last year. Um, but I think that his playmaking ability is a little bit underwhelming, uh, not underwhelming, uh, underappreciated. Yeah. I think hundred percent. It, it can be, it can be off the charts, especially off the bench, but Let's go to starting five. We just talked about it. I want to hear your starting five and how you're grading it. So my starting five is Ben Ben Simmons, Seth Curry at the two, Danny Green at the three, Harrison at the four, and Embiid at the five. We've talked about the starting five a lot. We've talked about it in the last podcast. Ben Simmons needs to be the point guard again. He, I think that's where he plays best. And I love that Ben – or that – excuse me. That Brett was trying to go with a different look in the bubble with putting Simmons at the four, starting to shake at point guard because, you know, shake played really well in the bubble. He had that game winner against the Magic, which is just magical. It was magical. It was magical. Um, but, yeah, Ben Simmons, point guard, needs to be there. Seth Curry at the two. I can't not start Seth Curry because, I mean, he shot – I mean, we've talked about this time and time again, Davis. 45% from three. That's crazy. He also led the league in a percentage from catch and shoot three pointers. Yep. You got to have him there against Ben Simmons because, hey, Ben Simmons led the league and kick out three assists. He needs to be there. It's that. I like that. Yes. (laughs) And uh, today, Seth Curry and um, Dwight Howard were introduced. um, And Seth Curry just was very, very. high appraising of Ben Simmons and his excitement to play with him on the floor. So I think that that combo will be great and you need to start him. And I love that there's so much depth that they could get into, but then Danny green, he needs to be the three and he is a two slash three, but like he can play any position. He's a right. perimeter defender. He's at he the end of his really career. Really sure. Really but he's a starter on a finals team last year and you can't ignore yeah, that for sure. And, uh, and then, Tobias Harris. He needs to be the four. I mean, uh, yeah. he, he had his best season with the Clippers as the four. He almost made the All Star game that year. Um, very good player. I just think when you force him to the three, he shoots. He tries to shoot too much in the mid range, and that's not where he needs to be. He needs to be playing at the perimeter in the outside by a guy who's not as athletic. Because when he's guarded by, by those threes, he can't do as much. So I love that. And then obviously, and be at the five. Trust the process. Where else would you put him? No, Where else would you sure. put him? But sure. give me your grade. Uh, I'm giving it an A. I'm giving yeah. it an A, Davis. I like that. I it's, like that. It's it's tickling me in the right way. That's all yeah. I'm gonna say. So uh, mine, I'm I'm just changing one thing up. I'm switching Seth Curry out for Matisse Thybul. Um, mm-hmm. I totally agree with everything you're saying with every player, even Seth Curry. But I think Thybul being that other defensive presence on the floor is going to be unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think that Danny Green and Seth Curry are one of the two should be on the court almost all the time, especially yeah. when Ron Simmons is on the court. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing against Seth Curry. I'm pretty sure his uh, he's married to Doc Rivers' daughter 
also. Sure is. So Doc Rivers, may, uh, you know, Seth Curry better not screw anything up or else. Uh, <laughs> screw some problems at this Thanksgiving. He's going in the hole. <laughs> yeah. But uh, my draft or my starting five grade, I'm going A minus. You know, I think okay. there's a few teams out there that have a better starting five, but oh yeah. I mean, you know, we still have two. We have two, three all stars on our team starting in our starting five. So who's the third? A uh, Tobias. I would say Tobias is, okay. uh, is, is 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 you know. A guy who can perform at that level, you know. Sure, sure, but sure, sure. Yeah, we'll go to the bench because we've been making some moves. We've got Dwight Howard. We've we've got uh, in my list. We've got Seth Curry. We've got uh, Furkan Korkmaz. You know, we have a lot of guys there. Jake. Can, yes. Maxie. So I want I want to yeah. hear what your grade is. I want to hear what your uh, quick analysis is of our bench. So I think the biggest part of this bench, this the upgrade of this bench, is the shooters. I mean, we got shooters on the bench now because last year we were forced to start a shooter because we didn't have any, and yeah. that just left the bench like, you know, lit, like just it was decimated. Yeah, excuse for sure. me. But now we got Shake on the bench. We got Furcon. We got the mixture of Matisse, maybe Seth Curry, maybe Danny Green. Not sure, but let's say just Matisse. Yeah. Who I he needs the minutes up He needs to play more. Because he is one of the best defenders of all time at his age. Oh, yeah. He was almost as good as Kawhi Leonard in terms of steals last year. But he needs to play more. He needs to play better on offense if he wants more minutes. And then, oh. obviously, we got other guys. We got, I think, Paul Reed, maybe. We'll see what happens. Dwight Howard, I love it. He's He, he has shown more versatility in recent years as a role player. Will be a great backup center. I just think we need to find another power forward who can fill that four. Because right now, I don't even know who it is. Is it Ryan Brokoff? Like, is yeah, that the so we, well, he's more of a forward. So he, yeah. I, I guess, shooting guard, small forward. So we haven't fit that need yet. Uh, give me your quick bench grade. Plus, Tyrese Maxey. Let's not forget that. But sure. uh, I'm going to give it a B plus. I think the bench is significantly upgraded from last year. And that's that was our weakest point. Yeah, for sure. And I, I totally agree with the shooters and a guy that you, you know, isn't really as mentioned on our bench that we just traded for Terrence Ferguson. A guy that's that right. I, I forgot about I that. Think, I think he could be a guy off the bench that's going to be do wonders. And you know, obviously Dwight Howard's a great guy. He's um, has a ring now and was very key on that Lakers team that won the finals. I think he's going to be unbelievable, especially when Joel's not on the floor. It's not going to give Joel all this pressure that he has to be on the floor, has to be making plays. Dwight can just go out and play some defense. I'm giving it a B plus two. I think the upgrade from last year is unbelievable, and I'm really excited to see how this uh, rotation works together. Our la- our, we have uh, our last specific grade. We have our front office and coaching. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we have Doc Rivers here now, but our biggest move, I would say for sure at this point, has been Daryl Morey and all the moves that he's making. Uh, what's your grade for front office and coaching? A plus. I don't, I don't know how, what, what else you say besides A plus. I mean, Daryl Morey. So I need to say anything more. Daryl Moore is our president of basketball operations. The the guy who Hanky learned everything from. So A plus for Daryl Moore. But let's go to the coaching real quick. The the assistants are crazy. I think this might be the best assistant bench in the league. Obviously, the new hire of Doc Rivers, love it. I think he's going to be really good, especially with all the talent on this team now. So Doc Rivers, a head coach. And they got Sam Cassell, who arguably should be looking at head coaching positions this year. He'll probably find one next year or the year after. So love that. Dave Yo- Yoger, Yeager? Yeah, yeah Yeager, Yoger. He played uh, – he was the head coach for the Grizzlies and the Kings the last couple of years. Great yeah. coach. Will help develop. And then, obviously, we got uh, Dan Burke, who um, – not Embiid's favorite guy in the world. <laughs> Uh, they traded shots a couple of years ago about um, when the Sixers beat the Pacers and they were jabbing a little bit, but I love it. I think the coaching staff is the best we've had in a long time. I wish Monty Williams was here and he would have taken over the head coaching role. I think he would have been a better fit. Yeah. yeah. I wish he would have a better role, but Hey, I love the coaching staff this year. I think we, we have everything set up and it's finally time for a Philadelphia team that has all the pieces in place to just go out and play and there's no worries. The front office, the coaching, the talent, the shooting, everything. A plus, Davis, give it to me. Yeah, I'm giving A plus too. I, uh, you know, Maury. I, I don't even have to talk about him. I mean, the moves he's making is absurd and mm. really helping our team. So, Doc Rivers, a guy who's a, he's a champion. He's a guy. And even though he didn't, it didn't work out with the Clippers. He was still building the team around and making conference finals. Now, 
maybe the conference final isn't where you want to get to. You want to get to the championship, but yeah. you know, maybe that roster just couldn't get there. I don't blame it all on Doc Rivers every mm. single year. Clearly and, turmoil in the, in the locker room. Right. And I, I was just about to bring up Monte Williams. I, I think he would have been great. Uh, he would have been a great upgrade, not upgrade, but he's a big players coach. And I think he's going to do great things at the Suns, but it is that de- it was definitely sad to see him leave last year, but 100% a plus now give me your total off season grade. Uh, this is, this is uh, probably the best Philly team we have right now. And I want to hear what you think these last few weeks have done for us. Yeah, best Philly team by a landslide. I don't even know who's second because it's maybe the Flyers, but so depressing. <laughs> but overall, I'm giving it an A minus. I think there's a couple holes. I think they could have done some better drafting, like maybe not giving up that 30 second pick for Josh Richardson. I know I love the Seth Curry acquisition, so I'm not going to hate on it too much. But you know, maybe could have drafted one other guy who's ready to play out of the power forward rather than another shooter. But don't get me wrong, I love them. Um, but a minus, I think this will turn out really well and we'll see what happens. I think this off season is huge. We'll see what happens yeah. on December 22nd. Davis. It's it, we're just on wavelengths right now. Cause Probably. I was literally just thinking I'm going to give them, I was going to give them an a minus too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I agree with what you're saying. I think the drafting could have been a little bit better, but we also didn't see any March madness last year. Yeah. So some of the guys that slipped may not have slipped, you know, like a guy like Halliburton who ended up going to the Kings. Yeah. He's the guy I think should have been top 10. I think Maxie's another guy that if March Madness was being played, he could have his draft stock could have rose. He but, should have been a lottery pick. I don't know why he wasn't. I, agree. I don't know how he even slipped to 21. I agree. And I, I'm even teetering on the edge of going to an A just because of how well Daryl Morey has done with this offseason and really turned us around into a true contender this year. But mm. if, if anybody has uh, any thoughts, please definitely send them into the comments section. If you have drop more it. fixers thoughts, drop them. We'll send more videos like this too. Everybody, boys. Wait, Take hold on. Talk. Go ahead. I've, I've always wanted to do this. Yes. You're going to hate on me for it. but Okay. Okay. Don't forget to hit that like button. Press subscribe. Support the bocce boys. I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> but um, Smash that like button, everybody. Smash Absolutely. it. Don't even smash it. Just smash it. <laughs> um, but yeah, subscribe for more. A lot of people are showing us love on the YouTube channel, Davis. We have 36 subscribers. I know. Doing well. Thank and, you. And for by the way, we're almost at a thousand total views right now, which is pretty awesome. Not pretty bad, awesome. everybody. Not I bad, know. Bocce Nation. But Great. hey, Bocce awesome. Nation, if you guys want shorter videos like this, if you guys have any comments, please let us know. We love the critique, and uh, we definitely love making these shorter videos for you guys about specific teams or events. So please send them down low. Ethan, thank you for having. Thank you for being here. Big love Sixers it. talk. Big season coming. Hell yeah, December twenty second. Can't wait. Yes, Bocce sir. Nation, we love you.